everyone. Today I'm going to talk about your brand as local. And um, we're going to talk about how your defense against what's happening in the SERPs right now is really to build your local brand. So brand is really king these days. We went through that era when links were king and when content was king. Brand is king, and I think it's going to stay that way. Um, so local search is hard. It's, uh, it has seemed to be an underappreciated sibling of SEO for a very long time. But it's actually harder than regular SEO. And Google seems to be making it harder all the time because they're giving searchers answers right in the search results um, instead of letting them go off to our websites. And these are just some examples of local answers that Google's putting in the SERPs that are preventing people from going to your website. So a lot of people think of this uh, as Google hijacking your brand's traffic. Is that really true? Well, it's sort of true, but Google owns the SERPs. It's going to do whatever it wants to do. And we can't change that. So we've got to adapt our thinking and figure out ways uh, to twist things around and take advantage of the opportunities that we're getting. Uh, this is some research that was published by Jumpshot and Moz about a year ago that said 90% of US search traffic comes from Google properties. And I think that Rand mentioned yesterday that it's gotten up to 95%. So between Google, Google's YouTube, and Google Images, they own 90% of the local search traffic. That's why I'm going to be talking about Google, 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 Google all day long. Um, in local search, there are four that have, um, KPIs that have been generally accepted at the low end of the funnel. Filling out forms, Facebook messaging, clicks to call, and asking for driving directions. And um, my business partner and colleague in local U, Mike Blumenthal, who contributed a lot to this presentation, and a lot to my thinking. Um, he did a, did a survey where he looked at these local business conversions. And 70% of them occurred right at Google. And another 25% of them occurred on the business's website. So what this means to us is those are the two places for local businesses where we really need to be concentrating our efforts these days. We need to really fine tune the SERPs to make sure they're accurate, that they're appealing to searchers, and that complete information is being given by our, uh, about our businesses. So I'm going to take some time to, to give you kind of an evolution of local search um, and the algorithms. Local search is simply just looking for something in some place. It's as simple as that. And when Google um, acquired maps and started thinking about maps, their idea was to model the real world, make their map a highly usable representation of the real world. It was going to be about real things in real places. And the idea has always been that the best businesses of their type within a certain area should be the ones that rank the best. In fact, a lot of searchers think that that's what's been going on for years. But it hasn't been. Um, when things got started, Google started with a lot of what I call poor proxies um, for their algorithm. And one of the worst of these was when, uh, back in the day, when proximity, distance between um, the business, um, was measured by the business's distance from the central post office in the city. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Today, now the distance is um, measured between the searcher and the business. Sorry. Um, so this really badly distorted the search results in local for years because we were using weird proxies. We got weird results. And a lot of us were chasing these weird proxies um, instead of concentrating on building our businesses. So, but the local search algorithm has always been based on relevance, prominence, and proximity. And these things haven't changed. What's gotten better are Google's proxies. Uh, for relevance, what Google's asking is, does the business provide the products, services, or attributes the searcher's asking for? How does Google know if you're relevant? 
Well, it looks at what you've put on Google My Business, what you've put on your website, what customers are saying about you in reviews and on social media, and what the traditional media is saying about you. <coughs> Excuse me. For prominence, Google's asking, is the business well-known and well-regarded within its own industry? And how does Google know that? Google's looking mostly at what other people are saying about your business and their authority. Proximity is really what defines the local algorithm. Is the business close enough to the searcher to be considered a good answer for their search query? And the real answer is, how close is close enough? Um, it really depends. It depends on the query, the business's relevance to the query, how many other businesses of that type in that area are relevant, the prominence of your business and your competition, and, um, it, and what, you know, basically, Google's trying to satisfy the searcher. So if the searcher asks for something near them, the businesses that are closer to them have an advantage. If this searcher was asking for something in Harrisonburg, Google wants to give them relevant answers in Harrisonburg. But if she were to ask for the best of something or the cheapest something or something that's open now, there are other businesses that could be more relevant than the businesses closer to her. So proximity is very fluid, and that's something I think a lot of people have uh, problems grasping and a lot of uh, problems explaining to their clients. In 2012, local search really started coming into focus with the knowledge graph. This really increased Google's understanding of local businesses. So you know with the knowledge graph, we're talking about things, not strings. And in this little simple knowledge graph of the Flintstones, um, Bedrock is an entity and Wilma Flintstone is an entity. And their relationship is that Wilma lives in Bedrock. And knowledge graphs are as simple as that. So in local search, I want you to make your website a knowledge graph of your brand. Feed this information directly to Google. Make your pages about your entities your people, your products, where you are, um, who you are, what you do. And then think of the links between those entities, those pages. Uh, you want to make them anchor text links that describe the relationship between them. I mean, think about this. You're just feeding your knowledge graph to Google with your website. This is very powerful. And then in 2018, Google announced that they'd been working on, a top, on topical layers. So this topical layer shows the nutrients that are in different uh, vegetables. But imagine a topical layer that was about a location, say Seattle, or uh, an industry like plumbing, or even about a particular business. You think about working on your topical layer and feeding Google more information about your business. And what the knowledge graph really did was it switched Google's uh, ranking algorithms from ranking pages, web pages, and websites to ranking entities or brands. So what you really want to work on is optimizing your brand. Um, local features pretty much stagnated from 2011 to 2014, um, mostly because of the Google Plus fiasco. But from 2015 until now, Google has really doubled down on local search. Um, they started with a presentation layer because they wanted to make um, information usable on very, very small screens and kind of solidify the way they displayed things across all devices. And we started getting these tabs on our mobile phones. They had to put a lot of information on a very small screen. There was an increased focus on reviews. We started seeing stars everywhere. Uh, and not just on Google properties, but uh, on their competitor. And then in 2015, brand reputation really kicked in. Um, this started with the Google uh, Quality Rater Guidelines, and in the first version of it, they said, for websites to get the highest possible rating, 
Google is looking at reputation as well. And every time they've updated this document, reputation has gotten more and more attention in it. They also started acting a trans adding a transaction and engagement layer, layer where the businesses and customers could actually chat with each other or um, do things like contact us now and make an appointment. And of course, there was Google local ads expansion. And we started seeing ads everywhere. There are even ads inside the local packs now. Um, so in the last two years, Google has given us an average of about um, two different uh, features or improvements to features every month. That's pretty, pretty big. And the pace of it seems to be accelerating. It seems like every other week we're hearing about something new happening in local search. And it is happening. So why did Google jump in to local search all of a sudden with both feet? Well, just a few months ago, Google's CEO said, we are moving from a company that helps you find answers to a company that helps you get things done. So this answers and actions right there in the SERPs is a really double-edged sword. Google is trying to prove its value to local businesses. And the reason is they want to extract more profit from local search. They're going to insert themselves into transactions already happening, sell more ads already happening, and possibly create a subscription model that will um, people will have to pay for certain GMB features. So your defense against this is to really boost your local brand on Google in 2019. And your local brand is simply awareness. Do people know who you are, where you are, what you do? and your reputation. What do the people in your market area think about your brand? Um, so you should be thinking of those in that manner as well, awareness and reputation. You wanna make sure people know about you and that you wanna be one of the good guys. And Google really loves brands. Um, and, and that's why we wanna build up our brands. And we know this because in 2008, the Google CEO said the internet is a cesspool where false information thrives and brands are how you sort out the cesspool. Google is letting the marketplace sort out the cesspool for them. And that's why they are rewarding good brands. It does a lot of the work for them. So what's your brand story on Google? Uh, in local search, We've started calling um, the results that you get when you search for a business name and location as the brand page. And these are your, uh, this is a snapshot of your answers in the SERPs. You also want to look at your mobile brand page and you really want to examine these well. And as I said, it's just a snapshot, but it gives you a very good idea of what Google knows about you. What's important to searchers? What Google knows searchers want to know about you? Uh, it gives you a general overview of your reputation. And if you do it for your competitors, you might see some missed opportunities, things they're doing that maybe you should try doing. And the, the essence of this particular page is to try to control what you can. I usually break it down into three different sections your own info, which is stuff from your website or stuff that you've put in Google My Business, reviews, uh, which show up in the SERPs and on your knowledge panel, and then a, th a third category of other, which is mostly listings and news about your brand. And you can control all your own info. And with reviews and listings and news, this is stuff that you can influence. Um, if you think about influencing it, you will find ways to influence it. So control what you can on this page. And by improving this, you're essentially improving your presence all across Google. The first thing I suggest you do on this page is review what I like to call your organic ads, the combination of your page title and meta description. Um, in local search in particular, it seems like there are so many 
ads that were written 10 years ago that are still stuck on local websites. Go review these and make sure that they have a customer focus, the phone number's present, that they include your service area and a call to action. Then look at your Google My Business cover photo. This is a critical image for your business. This is probably the most seen image that represents your business online. And, and um, for other photos, think about what searchers want to see about either your particular business or businesses like yours. If you're a caterer, people want to see your food, your fancy food. They want to see the decoration, the party decorations you put up. They want to see people having fun at parties that you've put on. If you're a water park, they want to see all the features in the park and they want to see kids having a ball. Um, in this particular instance, this is a uh, adult entertainment store. So their goal was to show people that this is a clean, modern retail establishment that you might even want to take your grandmother to. Maybe not. <laughs> but, you, <laughs> but that's the image that they're trying to convey with their photos. So think about what you want to convey convey and give um, searchers those photos. If you have listings with stars in the SERPs, go take a look at these. You want to respond to at least a few of the most recent reviews if you haven't been paying attention to them. You want to add photos and details. These are on your brand page when people search for you. They're likely going to click on them. Um, so try to improve these if you can. If you have listings without stars, you may never have heard of these, but these are sites that are important to Google for your location and for your industry. So if, you, if they accept reviews, you can encourage more reviews there. You can add photos and details. Um, you, if you do a good job of it, you can even get stars on your own URLs in the SERPs. Um, you're gonna have to use proper schema, not review gate, and it's much, much easier with a platform like get five stars that's out in the exhibit hall. Um, and if you do a really good job, your own site can even show up as reviews from the web in your local knowledge panel. Google Posts. In my opinion, this is Google's gift to small businesses who've been inundated with SEOs telling them to blog, blog, blog. This is a SM, SMB version of blogging. And uh, Greg Gifford's gonna talk more about Google Posts and Google Q&A uh, tomorrow. With Google Q&A, you need to pay attention to what's going on. This is on almost everyone's local knowledge panel. If you don't answer these questions, someone else will. And some of the answers we've seen have been awful. Um, so ask your own questions. You are allowed to do this. You think of your FAQs, the frequently asked questions in your business, and add those and answer them for your brand. You are your brand authority. Um, a lot of searchers think that Q&A is somehow some kind of real-time thingy that's going on, and it's not. Um, so you end up with reviews and trolls and all kinds of strange things happening there. So you really need to monitor this. You can uh, flag unsuitable content and get it removed. But the biggest thing about um, Q&A and monitoring it is there are a lot of sales opportunities that pop up there. Um, if you need to convince yourself of this, go look through the Q&A of a lot of local businesses. Um, if you don't respond in a timely manner, you know, people are thinking this is in real time, and if you don't respond in a timely manner, they're gonna forget about you and move on. So make sure you're monitoring your Q&A. Your, you can also do Google My Business profile messaging. You can communicate via text with searchers directly from your profile if you enable it. And you can turn it on and off as you wish, even from your mobile uh, GMB app. And this is something that every business kind of needs to try out and see how it works for them and decide for themselves whether it's a good thing or not but I can't imagine it not being a good thing, being able to communicate directly with people who had 
questions or things to ask me about my business. Google My Business Bookings will help you automate scheduling. And this is really huge for uh, a lot of low consideration uh, businesses. If you want an example, a good example of how you can use this well, look at Lloyd's Barber Shop in Santa Monica, California. Um, they've done a great job of automating their scheduling. Think about how many phone calls this could save your business if people could schedule things online themselves. And think about how great it is from the customer's point of view to be able to do that. GMB products have recently been made available to almost all local businesses. Um, and this allows you to feed your brand answers directly into Google. You are adding information into the knowledge, into the knowledge graph that Google has about your business. Uh, anybody who's not using this is crazy. Uh, Google My Business Services um, also allow you to feed brand answers into Google about your services. And you have a lot of flexibility with these, uh, these uh, fields in Google My Business. And the more information you put in there, the more Google knows about you. And then the more information Google can give to searchers. So you need to give Google the answers so that Google can tell the answers to searchers. And Google My Business and your website are the ways that you want to do this. And they should reinforce each other. If you're putting products on your website, put products in Google My Business. If you are putting services in Google My Business, make sure that, they're, that you're talking about them on your website as well. So when I look at, at these things, to me they seem like gifts from Google ways for small businesses to attract many, many more people from the search engine results. Um, I'm not sure why people think that Google's competing with them. I think this is Google giving you more and more opportunities to um, get actions in the SERPs, even if they want to take a little piece of the, a little piece of the cut. So for a couple of bonus, uh, bonus ideas is uh, to use your offline marketing to encourage brand searches. You can have a billboard that says, search Kaufman gas on Google to get a money saving coupon. The people that answer your phones can be telling prospective customers that. And what this is doing is making people search for your brand online that clues Google into the fact that you are prominent and popular in your local area. For the same reason, you want to encourage location visits. Google knows where people are and where they're moving around. And if they're coming to your location, that makes you more prominent. Google recognizes that. So the ways um, to encourage location visits. For some businesses, it's easy. You have a sale. You have an open house at a realtor's office. You have a party for your customers. Um, for other businesses, it's not quite so easy, but nearly everyone could do some kind of customer appreciation day for their customers, even if they're a service area business. And you can, use, you can partner up with local nonprofits and, uh, and other local groups to hold events at your location if you don't think that you have a draw for it. So Google recognizes people going to your location and they reward you for being a prominent brand. So it's been a really long and winding road uh, with local search since it started in 2004. We had all these bad proxies that Google had to work through, we had to work through. Um, as SEOs, we spammed the heck out of Google, uh, trying to chase this algorithm, which distorted the results even more. Uh, but the answer today is that we are approaching reality. Google has gotten very, very good at being able to recognize what you're doing offline and translating that into on, uh, online rewards. And Will Scott, another partner of mine in local use, said the key for us to remember 
SEO was never really about search engines. It's always been about optimizing the business. I'd like to replace that word business with brand. You need to be concentrating on optimizing your brand. And you need to be thinking about doing that on your website and on Google first. A lot of the other things that are going on online are just noise for most small local businesses. So your strategy really is to be one of the best. Not to just say you're one of the best, but to actually be one of the best businesses of your type in your local market area. And that way, when people are thinking about Google stealing their traffic, where did all my clicks go? You'll just be cruising along, getting those sales and conversions because you've built up your local brand in your area and you don't have to rely so much on Google for new customers all the time. And uh, I want to thank you. And again, I want to thank Mike, Bol Mike Blumenthal for um, helping me out with this. And thank you very much.